Hallo, ich bin Hello, my name is Jenny. Today I'm a guest at the Julius Kühn Institute in Dresden Pilnitz. I'm here with Monika Höfer, who will show me the Institute's fruit gene bank. Look, I've brought this apple with me. Do you know by any chance what cultivar it is? No, sorry, I don't know all the cultivars. We've got 800 cultivars here in the gene bank. Let's ask a pomologist tomorrow. All right. And what exactly is a fruit gene bank? We regard these traditional cultivars, that you can see here, as an example of cultural heritage. And of course we try to collect these cultural memorials and preserve them. We also catalogue their characteristics, because you can only use them if you know their properties. They are used for breeding and also for landscape design, like planting orchards. Do you only collect cultivars of apples or do you collect other types of fruit too? No, we're a fruit gene bank. So we've also got a collection of sweet and sour cherries, a collection of pears, we're establishing a collection of plums and we've also got a large collection of strawberries. Here, look, that's a European crab apple. You're welcome to try it. All species of wild apple are edible. Okay, I'll trust you. Ooh, but it's really quite sour. Does it naturally grow around here? Yes, it's the only species of wild apple that grows in Germany and in fact all over Europe. But the origin of apples, their genetic center, lies in Asia. These apples are really tiny. Can you use them for anything at all? Most wild species are tiny, but you can still use them. And this one in particular you can use for delicious wild apple tea. Of course, that's not the primary use. We mainly use them for breeding, because most species of wild apple possess resistance genes, which are very interesting for breeders. You as a gene bank, if you want to preserve these old species and cultivars, wouldn't it be possible to collect just the seeds of the apples and maybe freeze them? No, that's not possible. In the seeds you will find the genetic information of both the mother and the father plant. But we want to conserve the exact same cultivar. Or here, regarding the wild species, we want the exact same pattern of the wild species that we've got here. And for that reason, we use vegetative methods for reproducing the cultivars and species. Cloning methods. That is done for example in the plant nursery. Is that a kind of graft ditch then? Yes, exactly. Hmm, let's go and see that. Mr. Hartfeld is now going to show us a technique of grafting called whip grafting. It's normally done in winter. Hello. First you take a scion of a certain cultivar, cut it and cut the stock. The stock is like a tree with roots. Then you slide the scion onto the stock. It has to fit perfectly. And in the end you firmly join the two by taping them together so that they grow together nicely. What do you do when your trees in the gene bank are infested by pests? First of all, we've got two trees of each cultivar in our collection. And apart from that, we're in the process of establishing duplicate collections outside Dresden. And there are a number of other methods that we use in the laboratory, which I would like to show you now. This is Mrs. Schöber. She will show us how to prepare strawberry plants for cryopreservation. Hello. Hello. What exactly is cryopreservation? It's a preservation method using temperatures below zero. In this case, we use liquid nitrogen. We started out with the strawberries. Of course, you can't store the whole plant, but you subject the whole plant to a preparatory cold treatment for 14 days. And after that, the meristems are isolated. That is that part of the plant which reproduces new shoots after cryopreservation. Mm -hmm. This is a cryotube with meristems inside. The meristems will now undergo some further preparatory treatments. This is our cryo storage. In future, a whole strawberry collection will fit into this small tank. Wow, that saves a lot of space. Indeed. 
and in this tank it's minus 196 degrees Celsius. Here I've brought this apple. Would you be able to tell me what cultivar it is? Hmm, it didn't see much sun and therefore has very little colour. It's a Prince Albrecht of Prussia. It's got a typical flat shape, a smooth skin, not very hard. Let's look at the core and take out the seeds. Hmm. Nice little oval maroon seeds. It all fits. Stalk cavity, eye basin, weight, texture. It's just one of the most common apples in Saxony. Thank you very much for that. Isn't this nowadays done using biomolecular methods? Yes, you can use biomolecular methods. But first of all, you have to define the cultivar. You need to classify it and know its name. And that is done by pomologists. After that, you can take a fingerprint, something like a paternity test, and add it to a database of fingerprints. Only with a database, it's then possible to classify an apple just by its fingerprint. We've got so many lovely cultivars here. Tell me, where do you get them all from? Some of them we collect ourselves when we go on expeditions, and private people also offer them to us. And we get some from other gene banks as well. How many gene banks are there in Germany? Well, I can't tell you the exact number. There are gene banks in federal institutes, in national institutes and in private initiatives. We also cooperate in the German National Fruit Gene Bank, a network in which all German gene banks work together. And if I really like one of these, could I ask you for a sign like this for my own garden? Yes, you could order a sign, and we would send it to you in March. Fantastic! Thank you very much!